Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I hope the, the kids have a good time at yoga. That's really cool. I know they will. You should have seen one of the little faces went, ah, the minute it was mentioned. It was so cool. Um, again, I'm Patty Peterson. I'm one of the resident speakers here at Lake Harriet, and it's great to be here. And it's an extension of who I have always been in my career because I grew up singing, eventually singing, and we're doing music in our family. You would talk about songs in between them, and the next thing I knew, not only was I doing that career, I went into talk radio, and from there, I have not ever learned to shut up. So, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I actually had a health um, scare in my life seven years ago that really put me more at the forefront of the speaking circuit. So um, I'll tell you all about that in my talk today. But I thought, since I just said that I'm a singer and you already heard my beautiful sister play, that I'd start with a song, okay? Upon a star makes no difference who you are, anything your heart desires will come to you if your heart is in your dream no request is too extreme when you wish upon a star as dreamers do fate is kind
Thank you. Thank you very, very much. How many people knew today what the topic was going to be about? Okay, how many are here just to check it out? Great, awesome. Um, for those of you who've not been at a service before, in lieu of an opening prayer, we often go into a meditation. And so I ask you and invite you to uh, become in a really relaxed position. I'm going to have my sister play some beautiful music. We are going to invite that presence of healing and peace into this room, which already is in this room, in my opinion. But for each and every one of us who has faced a week that maybe has been a little turbulent, maybe your kids had too much sugar Friday night from Halloween, maybe you had too much sugar Friday night from Halloween, <laughs> laugh your way through it, right? This is the time for you. You are here for a reason. For you to take a breath. Feel that chair underneath you. And another breath and feel your vibration relaxing. The tension in your shoulders. Wiggle them if you need to get them a little more relaxed. Move your legs, remind them to become relaxed. Feel the seat underneath you of that chair. And now take another breath. And as you find your quiet place, that place that brings you peace, think of the desires that you have for yourself with your health, mind, body, and soul. And Mother, Father, God, we invite you into the space today. You are always with us, but we ask each and every person to open themselves up to the loving power that is that energy force called the universal love being. Imagine that energy is putting a hand on your shoulder right now. And any remaining tension that you may have had as you went to your quiet place is now being calmed as though a parent holding a child. And in this place, this place of conscious choice for yourself and the highest good of everyone in your life exists that wish and that prayer. We ask you, Mother, Father, God, for that divine healing in each and every one of us, mind, body, and soul. And in times of challenge, for us to see the lesson within that challenge so that maybe we may grow as a soul and to turn around and help another who may be experiencing that same challenge. And right now, with another breath, I'd like you to focus on what it is you would ask for healing for right now. And we will have a moment of silence as we pray right now for that divine loving energy to heal that part of ourselves, mind, body, our soul.
As my friend Echo Bodine says, this prayer, universe, please clear my mind. Universe, please clear my mind. Universe, please clear my body. Universe, please clear my body. And universe, please clear my soul. Universe, please clear my soul. And another breath with the trust that the universe has heard you. And that together, you and that loving energy that we call God, or the universe, you will learn, you will grow, you will share, and you will be. And on this next breath, I want you to enter your body again, feel your feet on the floor, feel your seat in that chair, feel your body waking up. Take another breath, and on one, two, three, you'll open your eyes. One, two, three. Welcome back. That was beautiful, Linda. Just beautiful. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, maybe I needed that zone more than anybody else today. <laughs> no kidding. There's just something about welcoming that intention into my life that makes me feel so much more peaceful. I wish that I would remember to do it on a regular basis. How many people meditate on a regular basis? Oh, that's really good. That's wonderful. I am more of a meditator and a thinker when I move, when I walk. That seems to be my time. But there is something about being in a group with people in a collective mind consciousness that, you know, we're all kind of going through that experiment together, that meditation together, that guided imagery. It does it for me. I love it. I love it. Um, <clears throat> I am here to talk about conscious health, healing, many things. Um, to be honest with you, I started my path of becoming more conscious about healing back when my now 29-year-old son, I have four sons, um, was a baby, uh, and he was an infant who came, uh, came with me on a, a couple of different flights, and before I knew it, he's rubbing his ears. We're on a ship for a business meeting with my husband. The ship doctor who doesn't speak English gives him pink gum medicine antibiotics. So, this was really new for me. My two older kids, if they had something wrong, they had a shot or they had a little round of antibiotics, he might put it in yogurt and boom, it was done. But this new pink gum medicine, well, my gosh, he was on this a lot. So we're talking about 1985. And he continued with chronic ear infections, diagnosed that day at three months, and continued and continued and continued with ear infections. He always got that round of pink gum medicine. I couldn't keep this kid well. By the time he was four, they get the wash, is it the Washburn uh, uh, testing that they do before they go into kindergarten? Is that what it's called? Anyway, um, he was so many deviations below standard level that he was the equivalent of an 18-month-old. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I know he wasn't talking. I know the world was painful to him because of all of the ear infections. I knew that. And I also knew that he really was never hungry because the antibiotics. As it turns out, I started working with holistic practitioners, chiropractors, people who were in the know. And the more I worked with them, from age three for him to age seven when we found the guy I call my guru, um, this boy was so sick. In one year, between age four and five, he had strep, mono, pneumonia, carried the strep, had uh, sinus infections They were gonna take, this was September to uh, March. He was never, ever, ever, ever well. 
He was this big, skinny. I mean, we got to this place finally then when we would get him well to, to like a holding pattern and it would be an interesting time because then we would kind of like live life. And at that point, um, you know, my older boys were seven years and nine years older than he. And we could live life as a family. Well, one of the times we decided to fly to Florida for a vacation, and not only was, we thought he was clear. He had had tubes at 10 months, by the way. Any of your kids have tubes? Okay, all right. Coming out of that at 10 months, he began night terrors for three months, which I know was really tough. And it started the day he came out of, of anesthesia. But anyway, this kid really had a rough start in life, and Noah has really been my wounded bird, I call him, and he is the reason I was driven into more of a holistic way of healing because it took a lot of years, four, five, six, seven, where I would do the medicine, of course, and then I would find an herb or something that someone suggested I try until I had a book put into my hands by my husband's aunt, and it was all about your immune system, and it's called peak immunity. And it is no longer in print, you're hard pressed to find it. It was from a, a holistic medical doctor by the name of Dr. Luke DeShepper. And in it, it talked about the three things that were the most detrimental to your immune system. Antibiotics, prednisone, chemotherapy. But it also talked about what to do for that. So, from that book to then aligning myself with a fabulous practitioner, finally, through food elimination, through um, vitamin C and acidophilus put in yogurt with vitamin A drops, which were, you know, like you could make a salad out of them or something, finally, we were building up his immune system. And when I learned, when I learned those drugs kept my kids sick, I was like, remember the commercial? It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. That's me. That was me. And that really started my whole path into uh, embracing holistic medicine. I wanted to know, well, what, okay, well, what about me? I had a lot of antibiotics as a kid. I had a lot of strep. I had scarlet fever, I think, uh, pneumonia. I mean, we had doctors that would come to the house back when we were tiny. They made house calls, and sure enough, we were on antibiotics anytime we turned around. And Really, I mean, there's really nothing bad with that until it gets overused. And then, as we all know, because how many commercials are there out there now for um, probiotics, for your intestinal flora? I mean, actually, back in the day when I was learning about this stuff, I would have to empty the acidophilus into the yogurt. It was bifidus bulgaricus and uh, lactobacillus acidophilus. And people would go, what are you talking about? but the three areas of your gut. So anyway, is when that is healthy, you can become healthy. That was a big thing for me. I'm still talking about Noah. He began to get stronger. He began to learn better. He had to have a book opened up on him, special ed book, where he had fine and gross motor um, special education, so that was occupational therapy. He had speech therapy because of his inability to hear properly. He couldn't talk. And he um, was about four, five in preschool getting pulled out. It was very embarrassing. So for him, pretty soon we got it so that when he was getting some services, they would just come in and look like they were helping everybody. But it was really a struggle to come back from that. And I, and I always wondered, now, why on earth, he in particular, what was that mission, that soul's mission in his life, in my life, to learn about so that I could become more educated and help my other children and eventually help myself? Well, he continues to teach me. He got to a place in seventh grade where he no longer needed services. If you don't know this, if you've had some special ed services for your kid, they, they wanted to label him highly functioning, mildly autistic savant. Because he could memorize baseball cards and he could tell you what day of the year your birthday was on 20 years ago. Kid's a great musician. As a matter of fact, he just played a show at First Avenue last night. He was the um, opening act for Macaul Macaulay Culkin. 
And so that was really fun for him. There's Noah going, ah, next to Macaulay Culkin <laughs> from Home Alone, if you're wondering who that is. But anyway, music became his outlet. Music became his passion. Music became his area of growth. And he would do the food elimination when we finally got with our uh, holistic doctor was still with. And he, you know, he would, would go to pizza parties and he couldn't have the cheese, so he'd rip it off. And sometimes we'd have to make him not have any wheat. So it was really a process. And you are your child's advocate for sure. And you learn how to do that. And if you haven't ever done that, of course, if you have children, you're your kid's advocate. Then it becomes your own advocate, then like in my mother's life, becoming her advocate as we needed to be, just so she had such a whole and best life she possibly could have had before she passed away. But you see, I'm telling you my personal stories. I got permission to talk about my personal stories into healing. Um, I'm going to segue over to the fact that I took my youngest, Jordan, to this holistic doctor because he had gurgly lungs and I didn't want to start the antibiotic thing over again. He was six weeks old. At the time I brought him in, I had laryngitis. So this um, gentleman is uh, uh, Dr. Russell Damore, and he gave me Chinese herbs and he gave my son Chinese herbs and we were both better in three days and I went, oh, wow. What? Who are you? And uh, that was 22 years ago, and I've been seeing him ever since. And I'm really glad because as I went on in my own life, um, it's helped my children, it's helped me. Uh, I was, you know, I had migraines for a while due to a head injury. Acupuncture took care of it. You know, I, when, when I Advil, which I'll take, didn't do it, I went, I went to see him and got acupuncture. But the biggest thing for me, was when I approached this time in my life, seven and a half years ago, when I knew I was starting to have some heart problems. And boy, oh boy, because of my, I didn't have a pill in my mouth. It was all herbs, it was acupuncture, it was exercise, it was Pilates, it was walking, it was all of this. And I chose to have a non-medicine life. This was a big choice for me. Even on radio, when I had my nighttime talk radio, it was called The Good Night Club, but the truth is, even though I had entertainers on the show, I also had a lot of spiritual um, leaders, Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson and Debbie Ford, people like that on the show, but also a lot of people in the holistic industry. Now, even the verbiage has changed. It was complimentary and now it's integrative, but this has been a path of mine that I have wanted to bring to the forefront because I think you need someone who walks the walk, talks the talk, as the person who asks the questions of the medical pro professional and the practitioner. And I had my time before my heart incident to try to sell this to American Public Media, which is public radio on Los Angeles. And uh, they said it would take three years to get approval, three years for funding, and, and then my heart thing happened. So it's been just sort of laying in the weeds, but it's a passion of mine, definitely a passion of mine. What it did for me was kept me informed because I wanted to know about this stuff. Kept me so informed that when I did indeed have a ruptured aorta, do you know what an aorta is? Okay, goes, it's the upside down umbrella handle from your heart and feeds your body. Um, and uh, they had to replace my aortic valve, and after about seven hours of surgery, I luckily am one of the ones who came through it. But if I didn't take care of myself the way I was taking care of myself, would I have made it? Would my healing have been such that within six months, thanks to my sister, I was back on a stage singing? And I think that what we have to do, yeah, I know what she said, we have to do something, pay those doctors back, we have to, she was my reason for getting better. <coughs> really, seriously, Pilates, you can't use your arms when you get up out of bed after heart surgery, Pilates let me just roll right up out of bed, yes, so cool. But anyway, I'm telling you a lot about my life because I'm wondering if you're seeing yourself in any of this. Maybe not the, the open heart surgery or maybe not uh, you know, the childhood ear infections that lasted forever. But that point in your life when you realize you wanna do something for your own health before it gets to a chronic scenario. How many of you are seekers about Qigong or energy healing or Reiki? Uh, Chinese medicine, mm, just, I, you know, it doesn't surprise me. People who come here are 
Seekers, may I say that word? You're seekers, you wanna know more, you wanna feel good, you wanna go back out into community and be an inspiration to them. Um, thank you, I'm glad you're here because we're like-minded. And I think when you're like-minded, you together, where two or more are gathered, you can go out with that continued consciousness and be that beacon of light, hopefully. This time in the healing department, it's really important to know that before a disease, this is my conversation last night at dinner with a woman who works for an insurance company. Most people don't do preventative. Most people don't seek it out. A lot of people don't get a physical every year. A lot of people wait till there's something catastrophic and then they do something about it. And then we have all the stories we have about the insurance companies, all the stories about the mega millions and the whole focal point from the lips of this woman working with one of the insurance companies was the new trend is about preventative. Right now I want you to play that five minute piece if you wouldn't mind, because the prevention of the bigger disease is what is so very, very important. We can be conscious. Every one of you in here are conscious. Listen to this expert and see what he has to say about prevention and being proactive in your own health. And I'm feeling good. Uh, really? That was perfect, whoever, very funny, very funny. Hmm, does it say conscious health? There's a new medical catchphrase on the horizon in yeah. America. Turn it off, This please. new movement is driven by consumers and it's getting the attention of numerous healthcare centers around the country. Exactly what is this new movement? Hi, I'm Patty Peterson. It's called integrative medicine, and it's viewed as more than the combination of complementary alternative medicine and conventional medicine. In his book entitled Integrative Medicine, Dr. David Raquel says that its purpose is about changing the focus in medicine to one of healing rather than disease. This involves an understanding of the influences of mind, spirit, and community, as well as the body. And it cannot be done without a sound commitment to the doctor-patient relationship. Just how important is this movement? In the Journal of American Medical Association of 1998, it said that 42% of Americans were using alternative methods of healing as complements to conventional healing. They were making about 200 million more visits to complementary and alternative healthcare providers than to primary care physicians. That coupled with a failing healthcare system in America today, we find a great emphasis towards the blending of alternative and conventional therapies for the future of our health and healing. The following interviews are examples of the importance of integrative medicine being utilized in our culture today. Lori Knudsen, Holistic Nurse and Director for the Institute for Health and Healing at Abbott Northwestern Hospital in Minneapolis, Minnesota, a leading integrative medicine facility. Give me an overview of integrative medicine. Well, the, the um, title integrative medicine has really changed. Um, it started with really complementary therapies or alternative medicine. And integrative medicine came to be um, several years ago, actually. Um, David Eisenberg um, out of Harvard and certainly Andrew Weil has brought that, that name forward. Integrative medicine uh, really takes traditional healing, which would be more native healing, um, and some of the complementary therapies, and blended it with conventional Western medicine. And that's how integrative medicine, that title, came to be. It's really moving forward now to what is um, titled integral medicine, um, which brings in a very spiritual component to it. So the title continues to change, and at some point we hope it's just medicine, that this is just healthcare, the way things are done, and it's not something different. Does this mean that we actually take responsibility for our own health and healing when we choose to embrace integrative medicine? Yeah, absolutely. This is about self-empowerment. That's what integrative medicine is. It's understanding all the choices that one has and how they apply individually to themselves. So um, really understanding your body, your body type, the way you think, how you act to the, the thoughts that you have. Um, and making choices for yourself. So as an integrative medicine practitioner, whether it's a nurse or a physician, your role is really to guide a person, to provide them with information, and then the person makes the decision independently. 
Can you talk a little bit about how the physicians are showing up with this old thought, new thought? Yeah, it's been an uh, interesting evolution. You know, when I started nursing, you would have never even talked about things, not even massage therapy, unless you were a physical therapist, and then it was okay. Um, but the language has evolved. It's become very accepted. I mean, we talk about energy work like we talk about giving uh, a shot. It's, it's not anything different um, than the, the normal conventional um, language. Physicians have really come around, and I think it's because they're experiencing the patient's experience. So as they see patients change, patients have less pain and anxiety, physicians can practice differently. They feel differently. And not only that, but the patient receives their care in a better way. So um, I, I often give out the numbers. When we first started two and a half years ago, we had about five physicians out of, I think we have 1,500 physicians here at Abbott Northwestern Hospital. We had about five that were really champions for us. And now we're up over 400 physicians that are routinely referring to us. So, and, and that is not going out and doing PowerPoint uh, presentations. That's really manifested through the patient's experience. Talk about integrative medicine and the future. The evolution that we're seeing um, and the acceptance is truly because it's the right thing. Whether we know that consciously or not, our bodies know it and our spirits know it. And I, so I think that the evolution that we're seeing is just because it is the right direction for us to go in health. Dr. Andrew Weil, author and director of the program in integrative medicine of the College of Medicine, University of Arizona. He's also the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Integrative Medicine. Tell me in your words, Dr. Andrew Weil, what that means. The short definition of integrative medicine is that it's the thoughtful combination of alternative and conventional medicine, but I think the... And that's what I had hoped the five minute was instead of birds flying high. You know how I feel. Anyway, he talks about, um, he's got a great book out called Healthy Aging. And it really can apply to everybody, not just people in my age group. It talks about food choices and things with inflammation within your body that affects things right down to blood pressure. So it, the, the bottom line of this talk today is really the choice is yours. And because I feel like you're seekers, anyone who comes to this um, setting here at Lake Harriet, I, I know that you've probably thought about, read about different forms of healing. You all know a good walk is probably the best medicine ever. I'm sure of that. And you've probably taken your vitamins like you always have. But to expand it and to research more, sometimes you need a practitioner to help you with that. Well, another stressful time in my life when my heart stuff was just showing up, um, I was no longer with WCCO Radio. And it was a blessing in disguise in that I really needed to work on my own health. After the aortic dissection and coming back from open heart surgery, I was now faced with a handful of medication every single day. But in order to be able to truly walk, both walks, that integrative medicine walk, I, would, I just said, hey, I, it's almost eight years, I'm still alive, thank you God. And I'm, I'm known for singing some high notes. But I take my medicine every morning with my protein shake, okay? You know, and I continue to seek out acupuncture, chiropractic, walking, things that are gonna make me feel better in my life because I'm in control of that. And I work with doctors, I tell them what I'm up to all the time, because it affects probably the blood thinner I'm on. Uh, we work together. This is the choice that we all have. And one of the points that Andrew Weil made is, if you're not happy where you are with a medical person, shop around. Get someone who's going to collaborate with you. I'm not talking about anything other than if you want to try holistic methods, let them know what's going on. They will probably learn from you and if you get a flat out no, and you know something has been feeling right for you in a more natural way of healing, it could be time for you to ask your friends, who do you go see, who do you work with in the medical community? Um, it's kind of a touchy subject. It can be a touchy subject. It can take a period of time before you find those right people. So don't think that this is just gonna happen overnight. You are in control of that, from what you put into your mouth, most of the doctors I interviewed for my 
uh, trying to get um, the show was the thing that kept coming up more and more over any herb, over any drug, was nutrition. The importance of nutrition in our life is what the greatest healer is. And that will come up time and time again. I'm not talking diet. I'm not talking cleanses. I'm talking about constant nutrition on a regular basis. I feel like, uh, you know, that is something. I'm, my party girls never left. I mean, really. Sometimes I'm having that whole Thanksgiving dinner. So, but the thing is, is I've resolved that, and then I'm, I'm back to whatever it is I'm watching uh, in, in my diet. And, and I just can't stress enough to you, because of these different choices that I've made for myself, it's really worked. The other thing I want to say to you is, we started with a meditation. And if there is a place in you that is at unrest, whether it is a troubling time in your life, it can show up in your heart, you can feel palpitations, try a meditation, try getting quiet, see how that helps you, how that helps your psyche. Because if your mind, your body, and your soul are your intention for its highest good as you walk through this path in life, if you can focus on yourself, part of your day, all of your day, you bring that as a teacher out into the community. It's not just about food choices, drugs, no drugs, acupuncture, it's all of that. But it's also about doing what's important for you to feel that inner peace, for you to connect and commune with that loving energy we call God, Mother, Father, God, we call universe. It's very important for me. I can say this, I have got a big birthday coming up in a few days, and I miss my mom. I, well, thank you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm surprised at myself at how my footing is lost. And it has been, we've been talking about that. It's been over a year. But there are some days when that rug is just pulled out a little more than normal. And um, I'm gonna have to get quiet. And I'm gonna have to find out what is that button that's being pushed for you right now? Because with that, I am carrying her through my life. And there is a disdainfulness that if I don't just take a breath and put on my happy face, um, I could feel pretty doggone grouchy right now. Yeah, maybe turning 60 has got something to do with it, I don't know. But, I want her here. I want her to celebrate this with me. I don't, you know, it's kind of funny how the little kid in you never really leaves, you know? It's okay, it's okay. I have embraced my little kid many times. But this is one of those times, so I have to go do this. I'm not telling you go do it, I have to do it now. I have something that was shown to me this morning by doing a guided visualization with all of you that I went, okay, Patty, now I'd go home and do this on your own until you can get work through this. And maybe I won't work through it. You know, maybe it'll just be there as a reminder that mom is still very much right there. Happy birthday, you know? But I have that responsibility too. I really, really do. I look for good news in about a month. I hope to hear the next two words, the, the two words that I've heard for seven years and that is no change in my aortic or heart health. That's a heck of a way to, I'm, I'm hoping. So you can hold me in the light, I'd appreciate it. I'll do the same for you. But it is all about a desire and an intention and an attitude too. There's cute phrases, fake it till you make it. Has anybody ever said that? Has anybody ever tried that? Okay, that's good, I'm not getting a lot of yes. How about, um, Smile, though your heart is aching, smile, even though it's breaking. What do you think about that one? It's a beautiful tune. Some people can't do that. They think it's hypocritical. I personally, I'd rather smile. I'd rather get through things because eventually it fills me up because people are shining their light back on me too. After CCO and after my heart things, I, um, decided to go into hands-on healing with Echo. And I'll tell you what, that healed me from the inside out. And I did healing work for several years until I had um, my 
open heart surgery. And I just, life was a little busy after that. And I have done some hands-on healing with people again, but I'll tell you, seeking things out like that and allowing someone to teach you who is got a lot of knowledge, they can really be a wonderful guide for you too. So in your choice of healing and you're choosing to be a person who's looking towards deeper healing, look to people who have been there, who have worked, who have studied, who teach, who would have coffee with you or tea and see if they can't be that good guide for you. Make sure that you surround yourself with people who hold your best interest at the highest esteem. And I think that when you create that environment and that community, much like the people in this room, there is that collective consciousness about choosing healing and being conscious about it. Conscious radio, conscious healing, that would have been the name of the show, Conscious Health. And I asked some friends who were book authors, um, Gay and Katie Hendricks, they have conscious love. And it's all about telling the truth. Truthful with yourself, truthful with your partner about who you really are, how you're really feeling instead of hiding it. And the whole subject of hiding it and hiding that persona underneath the rug is a whole nother topic we'll talk about, and that's called your shadow self. I've touched on that in the past. But this is all about being conscious, being open, and saying, I deserve to learn more about healing at whatever level that is, mind, body, or soul. And so with that, if that is your intention, I'm gonna sing you another song, all right? A dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. Do you know this? You can sing it. In dreams you will lose your heartache. Whatever for you keep have faith in your dreams then someday your rainbow will come smiling through no matter Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the time in the service where I believe we do a little song, Linda, you'll do a little playing. And uh, do we have ushers today? And uh, yeah, we'll have a little song and we'll have the ushers um, come to you. And if this is a place where you get your spiritual food, we invite you to support us if you feel like we have supported you. And um, we appreciate and we thank you ahead of time. And we'll say a prayer afterwards. What a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. The dark, sacred night. I can't remember this line. There we go. And I think to myself, sing it, you guys. What a wonderful world. Oh, pretty. 
faces of the people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I see babies cry, I'll watch them grow. They're I think to myself, what a wonderful world. And I think to myself, you've got it. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's time to stand up. And if we would be so kind to create a circle around the sanctuary, and I'm gonna do a tune. Ready? Almost. To accentuate the positive, so sing it if you know it. You gotta accentuate the positive eliminate the negative latch on to the affirmative don't mess with mister in between you gotta spread joy up to the maximum bring gloom down to the minimum e Pandemonium's liable to come upon the scene. To illustrate, you know what, you sing it. My last remark, Jonah and the whale. Don't know and the ark. What did they do when everything seemed so dark? They said you gotta accent. You ain't the positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative, don't mess with Mr. in between, take, say, don't mess with Mr. in between, no, no, don't mess with Mr. in between. With love and light, have a wonderful week, and conscious health is our choice. Woo! Thank you, everyone. Thanks, dear Roger.